Hi everyone, it's TTL back with another video for you and today we are going to be taking a look at the new ROG Helios case. Now it's quite expensive, it comes in at £249 and let's face it, normally when brands have a dabble in cases, it, you know, they can be a little bit hiss and hit and miss. But they've delayed this quite a few times and it has had a few cheeky changes in, even since I saw it at Computex last year. So let's get down and dirty and take a look. And just to let you know, right from the start as well, we've obviously got a fairly tarty ROG theme build in it, but we've used our standard test equipment to do the thermal testing in it. So you've actually got two builds. So it's uh, when we do give you the thermal test, it's actually fair with all the other cases in the graphs as well. We just thought it would be nice to chuck a second set of hardware in just to kind of like make it look a bit bling in the main bit of the review. So we always start at the top and the front. In the middle, you have your power switch. On the left-hand side, as you look at it, you've actually got a switch for the LEDs. Now, this only controls the ones in the front panel, which I'll show you in a little moment. That gives you the ability to change the modes, switch on to the motherboard mode, or you can individually change the colours as well. You've got a fan switch on the other side to connect to the fans via a hub that's uh, on the back panel. Again, I'll show you that in a bit, between the low and high mode. You've got a reset switch, microphone and headphone port. You've got four normal USB 3.1 Gen 2 A's and then you've got a C in the middle as well. When it comes down to the strap on the top, you've got the ROG Strix kind of branding on either end. And it's almost like a kind of military um, uh, sort of fabric. And it feels like uh, it should be coarser than it is when you've got hold of it. It's not particularly soft. It's a really difficult fabric for me to kind of describe to you. But one thing I would say to you is it is more than enough to be able to pick the case up, even with just a single layer. It's very tough and durable. But the one thing that I would kind of try and point out to you is uh, it, the case, especially when fully built, is very heavy and you can definitely use this i mean you can literally just grab the back end and it's not going to make any of this velcro come off because they are velcro straps so if you don't like it you can remove them now they can completely take the weight you can move it around but the reason why i was saying about the weight is just kind of you know give it a bit of respect or at least give your back a little bit of respect and the other thing with using the straps is if you are trying to put it up on a desk, it will get incredibly heavy when you're lifting it up in front of yourself. So just kind of go careful, kids. So with the uh, lighting button on the front, it's a long press to switch between mode, colour and motherboard. But if, for example, you are in the colour mode, a quick press will then change the colours between it. And if we were to do a long press now, that's now motherboard, so that's going to be synced in with the rest. That's what we had it set to. If we do another long press now, this is now in the mode button, so you can now see independently it's now changing colours away from what the motherboard is telling it to do and the like. And I can do short presses to be able to go through the different modes for it. And because the lighting on it is addressable, it's not just a blanket change color. You can now see that it's fading down through the colors. And there are lots of different options for you to be able to go through and play with to set to whatever the theme of your system, your build or your gaming den or your man room uh, requires. Now the lighting for the front of the case is actually hidden in these little sections that stick out. And there's lighting on the inside on both sides. So what it's doing, it's lighting through the glass onto the etched design at the front, uh, which means you don't get any real light bleed or anything like that. It's not sp particularly very bright either, but it does give a very cool effect uh, and it kind of works really well um, when you consider the fact that <clears throat> there are just black fans on the other side and then a dust filter uh, as well. If you were to reach underneath the front of the case, you can grab the full length dust filter. It goes from right at the very front of the case, right the way through to the back and includes the power supply if you end up putting your power supply around that way. You can also see there's a fair amount of gap underneath the actual case itself. So you've got plenty of ventilation there, 
but they still gave you some vents on the side of the case here as well and that's on both sides as well so if you were to be one of those people that had power supply in the bottom or you were looking at possible other cooling options on the bottom then all of those kind of things may help calm you down a little bit and it certainly gives uh, it certainly shows that they've given a lot of attention at least at the bottom to airflow with the dust filter removed giving the bottom its own dedicated look you can see that we've got some rubber tabs on the feet here and then this is actually a hard drive cage in the bottom which you can move one notch back or one notch forward depending on where you would like to have it located maybe you've got a slightly longer power supply or something like that if you move it forward you'll be able to see it from a cutout on the inside which is something that you may want to consider um, but there's no uh, easy peasy ways of putting radiators and the like down here the fan spaces and stuff it's just not quite right you could customize it yourself if you wanted to with those holes there are you know there would be possibilities there for you but it's not specifically something that they've designed in. Now, I didn't cover this when we were at the top because I actually wanted to show you that there is a really nice clip for it, but there is a dust filter for the roof if you wanted to use it. It's actually got some really funky um, designs on it as well. And you can put up to a 360 millimeter rad in the roof, which is kind of handy considering that Asus do actually have 360 mil AIOs now. And it all goes in, clicks in, all easy peasy, lovely, and it's underneath all that webbing that I showed you before. Now, on the back, you do have the two buttons on either side to release the sides for the doors. And this is literally how you get the doors open. And it's a simple, simple button, and you don't need to press them to be able to close them again. In the rear of the case, you do get normally a plain 140 millimeter fan. Now you also get another three of these in the front of the case as well. They go up to 1400 RPM. You can tell by the blade design that they're more of an airflow fan than a static pressure fan. Also, like I said, the 140 millimeter and you do get rubber tabs in the corners of the fans to help with vibrations and the like. One of the sad things though is when the camera focuses it is only a three pin fan but the when i show you in a minute the um fan hub in the back is all for three pins as well anyway this 120 millimeter rgb fan that we've got in here is just something that i've specifically added to make it look pretty like i spoke to you about at the start but you can have a 120 millimeter or a 140 millimeter fan and you've got a fair bit of movement up and down there as well now you can see that on this section of the case um, I've got a vertical GPU in and this is a separate add-on plate and all you have to do is remove five of the uh, covers from the back, slide it in and it gives you uh, a vertical slot that you can screw your graphics card into inboard in the case and I would kind of say this is where you would want to be putting an air cooled card but you can use this one further out as well. Um, uh, if you want to. You do get a little bit of ventilation down the side for it. Most graphics cards are going to exhaust some kind of hot air out of this part. And it gives you about 25 millimeters of gap between where a normal dual slot card will be and then the side of the case. If you were running something like a Strix or something like that, which I am here, that's why I've moved in so that there's a little bit more room for it to breathe. And with this um, uh, add-on, it literally is something that they've literally just sent in the box and you can literally just fit it with a few screws and it does just mean that you end up with a pile of spare slots that you've uh, removed for your, um, to be able to access it. So it's all good. Power supply in the bottom. Two screws either side. You can literally have your power supply either way up and it goes in from the back that way. Uh, you can see the dust filter that I said from the front comes right the way through to the back of the case as well. Onto the rear of the case, I've not actually pulled the plastic off of it yet. It's on both sides though, and that's why it's got kind of that dull, uh, non-sheeny look to it. But it has got a fair amount of tint to the glass. I'm just going to pull some of it off now so that I can show you. The reason why I don't take them off beforehand is I actually like to try and not scratch them or anything because they can get moved around a lot uh, while we're still working on them. Something that I have just realised as well is the plastic goes underneath the metal. But it's a fair old tint there. 
but not excessive. So I think that's a relatively uh, good balanced way of doing it. Now, in the back here, what you can see straight away is we've got this plexi cover and there are two screws that you just need to undo so that you can see what is going on on the other side. And this is actually a really kind of simple yet great idea because it's on a hinge and it opens up and it shows you all your cables and the like on the other side. Now you can see here we've got, this is the main reason why the power supply has to go in through the back to give the case a good bit of rigidity. We have no real access to it there. There are a few screws, but that's for the panel on the other side that's covering the power supply. You do have on this left hand side, four solid state drive uh, covers. Covers, what we're on about? Four solid state drive mounts. And with those solid state drive mounts or 2.5 inch hard drive mounts, uh, they just uh, clip in or screw off, I should say, and you can literally just undo the screw and then when the get the door right, you can remove them. So it's quite easy. Then you screw your solid state drive to this and then it goes back in the case. Really nice and simple. There is access really to be able to get them in the other side as well, but this screw is slightly too big. So when I point it out in a minute, you'll know what I mean by this. But if you really wanted to do it, you could pull this screw out and just use a normal threaded screw like that. And I reckon you'd be able to get them in. It means pulling the front fans out. It's not something that ACES say that you can do. It's not in the manual or anything like that. But with the right screw, you would still be able to do it. So when I tell you about it, when we're on the other side in a minute, you'll know what I'm on about. To fit them back in again, you literally just push the tab in and then you can do it with your finger if you want. We are all in there now. Now you can see that we've not made any massive attempts to make all the cables tidy. They are literally just all bunched up like that. You can see the hard drive bay at the bottom that I spoke to you about so you can get access to it from the rear. But you do have some Velcro straps sort of thing that we've been getting used to seeing with the motherboards and the like now. And then at the top there, that is the fan hub that I said to you about. You can also see that it is just three pins. That is also controlled by the button on the front where I said you've got the low and high modes. Um, so you do only get two modes with it there. There's no way that you can really control it from the motherboard or anything like that, which was a shame. It's also a bit of a shame that it wasn't four pin PWM compatible as well for those of us that have spent a little bit more money on our fans. Before we completely disappear to the other side of the case though, there is, as seen on some of the Strix motherboards, a little rog fabric badge which hangs out the side of the case and it does give you the kind of impression that they've been you know looking for those little details to be able to join it in with uh, all of the other stuff that they've been doing it is just a minor detail but at the same time it is kind of quite cool as well <laughs> because yeah let's face it you don't see a lot of um, cases with a little uh, label on it do you Round to the business side of the case, literally press the little button at the back, like I said, take the door panel off to expose the hardware that's inside. And like I said, we did put this little build together just to be able to show the case off with ROG kit, but obviously you don't need to use it. And you can see when we did our testing, we actually test it, completely different kit. The kit in there is a Maximus 11 formula. You then got a 360 mil Ryo uh, AIO cooler in the roof. We've got a RTX 2080 Ti Strix. Is a 9900K in there as well. That is the new G-Skill memory as well. It's, the, it's RGB, it's got the crystal effect tops. It's all really nice. And then a 850 watt Thor power supply. Now, one of the things I wanna draw your attention to straight away because it's something that annoys me with not just this case, but every case is the cutout at the front. Now that cutout at the front is so that you can put a radiator in the front if you wanted. But if you didn't want, you're left with a cutout. And it's something that I think Asus should have had a cover for. It should be removable just so that this whole entire section up here can be completely sealed off. And yes, I know it then half cuts the fan off at the front, but it would just have been nice to have been able to clean those lines up. There is a uh, mount, a pump mount or a reservoir mount, depending on you know, what you want to mount to it, that you can mount in two separate positions 
at the front uh, of the case. But again, it would still have been nice if we had a cover there in case we only had a 240 mil rad in the front. But there is enough room there for you to be able to get a 45 millimeter thick radiator in the front either. You can fit, if you wanted a 420, a 360, a 240, or obviously 120s and 140s if you wanted. Now, there are some uh, mounts on the floor of the case for you to be able to screw a uh, specific vertical mount into. I didn't get sent any vertical mounts and I've not been told by ASUS about the possibility of them having their own ribbon cables or like official vertical mounts or anything like that, which is a shame. I think with something like this that was going to be getting launched and being such a high profile product, it should have been something that should have just come out with a reviewer's kit so that we could have at least showed you. But what, while we're here, you can see that you do have a grommet here for you to be able to pass your PCI Express power cables through, but that's really gonna be only any good if you use this uh, mount here. We've gone for the inboard one to make sure that our 2080 Ti Strix has got lots more room to breathe. And it also means it's pretty much in the middle of the fans at the front for a reasonable airflow. That's literally just the build that we've done here. Uh, while we are talking about the GPUs though, there is at the back a really nice adjustable GPU support. Now it's just here, but you can see I've got another one poked out the side up here. Now you can use that GPU support to support vertical GPUs or a normal horizontal GPU. And it might just help with a very heavy card to kind of help mitigate any sag that you might have got with it. The, once they are quite stiff to move those little supports so once they're in place they're pretty much in place and going to give you a really good nice support you get two of them with the case as well so if you are lucky enough to be running S, SLI or Crossfire it will cover both your bases there we move slightly up you can see that there is a cover there now this whole metal cover including where these bars are is covering up where the cables can come in from the other side of the case but the uh, 24 pin section up here, you can see that we've actually routed our AIO uh, hoses behind it just to help keep things sort of tighter and slightly tidier as well. But you can see we've got our 24 pin cable there and then our USB-C cable or USB 3.1 Gen 2 cable just underneath it disappearing out there as well. We've also got solid state, uh, the normal SATA cables coming through further lower down and everything like that. Um, also, with this cover, you can mount a 2.5 inch hard drive to this and there are little cutouts at the top for you, you to be able to put your power and your data through. But with the solid state drives that we've got here, we would have liked to cut out at the bottom as well because our stickers would be the wrong way up. I'm just literally walking off to grab a solid state drive now, but with our data at the bottom, that would be the way our SSD would sit. And it would be a shame if it was that way around. And it's, it's just a very minor thing. If you were that worried about it, you could easily you know, print another sticker or request for another sticker so that you could get it the right way up. Uh, but I do actually, personally, really like that mount because it's a really nice way to put your solid state drive up. It keeps everything really nice and tidy. It doesn't necessarily feel like it's particularly out of place as well. So that is one of the things I really personally like on this case. It is such a small thing. I did say to you earlier as well about the possibility of mounting the uh, SSDs on the other side, and this is where they would go. And you can get them in there, but because of the mount here, because this cage, there's a few um, thumb screws here, so you can remove the front cage entirely. It's gonna be able to give you the opportunity to be able to uh, put your radiator in in one piece or your AIO or you know all of your fans at once but because of that there's not a lot of clearance down the back and that's why that thumb screw wouldn't fit. In the bottom there is a power supply cover you can see a bit of the old uh, rog blurb on this section uh, but you have got a window which is great for the Thor but one of the things I will say is whereas it is great for the Thor it kind of feels like this section here probably should have been maybe like over here or something, because when you're sat at your desk, it does obscure the eye a little bit more than I really would have liked. I think if anything, this um, line needed to be a lot shallower 
or maybe just not there at all and they could have just followed this design up here um, because I think it's unnecessarily obscuring the eye and when you've kind of if you've bought a rog thor part of it's probably likely to be the fact that you like the little screen on it and you like the fact that you can change all the colors and you know this is can be animated with the rest of your system and then they sillily cover it up a little bit and this is one of the few silly things on the case i don't particularly think works with very well it is something very minor but it's it's something minor away and it does match this line here so I get why it's there and all of that sort of stuff. It just, I don't know, maybe it needed to be like another 10 mil this way or something just so it didn't obscure that eye, that, you know, that little bit. Up in the roof, plenty of room for a 360 mil Ryujin uh, AIO if you want. Uh, we're using some Cooler Master fans with these just because then it's all we can set the fan colours to match the rest of the case and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, but you could put the Ryujin in the top or in the front um, because you've got room for both sorts of radiators here. So it's completely down to you. Now when you do get the case, all you do is you get the three fans in the front and the one fan in the rear. And that's how we tested it with our standard kit as well throughout the fan ranges. Um, so you don't get anything in the roof when you first get the case, but it's kind of a perfect place to plonk a big AIO like the Ryujin anyway. And that's why we kind of went with it. Clean air in the front, hot air out the top, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And to be honest with you, I think it looks that little bit better with the way that the rig's laid out anyway. So yes, the hardware has magically changed, but we have moved on now so that we're doing a standardized set of equipment that we're doing our thermal testing with. Now we use just the case fans as they come in their normal configuration. And then the hardware that we've got inside uh, is an Asus Strix board. And then it's got a 9700K in it, which has been manually set to 4.8 gigahertz at 1.2 volts so that the voltage stays completely standard. Then we've got a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black CPU cooler. That is actually wired directly into the power supply with a Molex, but with a nine volt um, uh, power reducer, so a little uh, speed reducer. So that stays static as well. So, uh, and then the other thing, we manually fix the GPU speed to 60%, and that is so the only things that can then change are gonna be the case fan and the way that the case performs. What we do is we take an average of all the CPU cores and then minus off the room temperature and the same with the GPU. We take the GPU temperature and then minus off the room, room temperature. So it gives us delta temperatures. And if I bring the results up, what we actually do is we do one set of tests at 600 RPM, one set of tests at 1000 RPM, and then we do another set of tests at the case's maximum. And we actually wire the case fans into a power supply then for 12 volts dedicated. So the one really that's a really good comparison here is going to be the uh, 600 RPM for very low fan speeds and then 1000 RPM for average. And then obviously depending on the case fan speed on the maximum may depend how well it performs and how well it doesn't. And at 600 RPM what we will be doing is a CPU and a GPU test and we uh, sort them differently as well. So because it, it can change a little bit. So at sorted by CPU what you can see is the um, the Helios is on par with the Fractal R6 at the bottom but when we sort it by the GPU you can actually see that the Helios actually does really well with the GPU temperatures there as well those uh, 340 millimeter fans at the front of the case do actually help with a decent amount of airflow and I suppose it's helping with the 140 at the rear expel everything as well when we spin up though and we go to a thousand rpm uh cpu focused you can see the helios actually kind of wins again but if we flick it round to the gpu test the helios kind of then uh, loses out ever so slightly to the fractal defined vision at the bottom but you can see that the um the two tests are incredibly close there's 0.1 of a degree in it so it's pretty much on par with the defined vision at this point with the uh, with the gpus at a thousand rpm sorry at max which for the helios is 1400 rpm cpu you can see it actually does just pull in front of the 680x which is uh, fairly good um, because when you look at the rpm difference the corsair case was at 1700 rpm and the helios is only 1400 rpm and then when we go into the gpu focus test 
actually ends up going about midships. Uh, but there's, there's a couple of degrees in it in reality. Uh, but again, if you have a look at the cases in front of it with the GPU test, both the Corsair and the Define are a little bit quicker on the RPMs there. Um, so really, it's, it's on par with the Corsair 680X with more fan RPM. So I would actually say, just looking at performance numbers, the Helios has actually done really well. So when I got the Helios, I'm going to admit, I went in hard looking for specific problems. And at the end of the day, it actually cooled really well, which was pretty good. Um, and obviously we changed hardware specifically just to change it all around as well, just so that we could, you know, we could compare it to all the other cases. But I went in hard looking for the other details. And in the end, I ended up coming out with, they could have done something else with the solid state drives really easily. I thought that the cover for the uh, Thor or your power supply down the bottom was slightly more restrictive, especially when you consider that it was probably designed to have a Thor in it. And when it just sat straight by the side of it, it I think it obstructed it that little bit. But beyond that point, I didn't really have any massive issues with it, other than the fact it is quite expensive. It's £250. But at that £250 price point, you do get glass all the way around. You get lights, really easy integration with uh, like loads of the ROG stuff and the designs. And it is, a lot of it is aluminium as well. So you've got the aluminium top, the aluminium front. And it's, in, in the grand scheme of things, when you look at other cases around like, maybe for argument's sake, the Fractal Vision, which is 225. Um, uh, so it's 25 pound more. This you do get, it's a little bit more space. You can still easily put the, uh, the rad in the roof. I don't know, I think the, the it's going to depend. It's definitely, definitely only going to be a case. They call it a showcase anyway. So it's definitely going to be something for a ROG fanboy. Someone that's really into their ROG kit or someone with OCD and they want everything to match. And that's another reason why I kind of went this way with the, the build for the review as well. So like the bit that we actually used when I was uh, looking around the case and stuff, because this is probably what a lot of people are gonna end up aspiring to have on their desk anyway. And when you see it like that, it does kind of make a lot of sense because yes, okay, we, we have got a lot of uh, lighting going on in there, but obviously you use that lighting to be able to colorize it and theme it yourself. You can have it white like I've got here. This is how I would have it on my desk, maybe with something in there red as well. But for those of you at home, you could go unicorn puke. You could have it obviously green, blue, and it's because of the fact it's all monochrome, it does work. And especially with the Maximus and the Ryujin cooler with the mirrored panels on it, it does end up just kind of fitting together and working to the point where, I mean, I normally keep a full build for the brands together anyway to help me when I'm doing other reviews. It means I can just pull it out and plonk it on. And I actually, now it's there really like this and I didn't want to I actually kind of went into this specifically wanting to find something wrong with the case so that I could dislike it and it, I think they've ticked a lot of boxes um, and considering it's their first proper kind of you know step out into the open with the case design I begrudgingly want to say that they've actually done quite a good job and I can see a lot of you Asus fanboys girls people potatoes you know, whatever you assign yourself as, um, as really kind of liking this because it's it, it's one of those ones where if you forget about the price, I know that's important, but if you forget about the price and you were to take the ROG logo off of it because they're going to be the two things most people are going to moan about. But if you forgot about those two things, we didn't know those two things, it's actually a really good case. So I'm just going to leave you with that.